The CSS transition property is the simplest way to add animation to our website, and in this video, we're going to see how to use it. Welcome, my name is Kevin, and if you're new here, my channel is all about learning how to make the web and how to make it look good while you're at it. Animation on the web is a good way to catch attention, and if done properly, increase user experience. The most basic way to animate something is with a transition. The MDN says it best. Transitions enable you to define the transition between two states of an element. Basically, when the state of an element changes, through things like hover, focus, or something else, we can change its CSS property. Transitions make the change, well, transition from one state to another, instead of instantly changing like the square does now when I hover on top of it. Now, there's a handful of transition properties, so let's go and look at what they are and how they work. So here in this code pen, I just have this box that changes color on hover. So I have box here, I have the hover here, and, well, we can see it changing color. Now, this, the first property we're gonna start with here is the transition duration property. So on here, I can write transition hyphen duration, and I can write in a number. And what's important to know here is this can either take a millisecond or seconds. So I could write 500 ms for milliseconds, or I could get the exact same thing by typing 0.5 s for 0.5 seconds, and it would give me the exact same result. The one thing to know with this though is, in general, I'm gonna suggest you use milliseconds because while CSS can accept seconds or milliseconds, JavaScript only accepts milliseconds. So at one point, even if you're not using JavaScript currently, you're probably gonna get into that eventually. And it's just handy to be using milliseconds sort of as a standard through everything that you're doing. So I'm just gonna switch this over to 500 milliseconds. And now I can see that it actually transitions over instead of instantly happening. And if I bring this up to 1000, which would be one second, the same thing, but slower. And if I switch that over to 100, the exact same thing, but really fast. Also, um, just on this whole seconds or milliseconds thing, in general, you want your animations to happen pretty fast. Because if I do one second, you can see that's actually a pretty long animation. Most of the time, you're going to be at like the 250 to 500 range, maybe, and 500 is even kind of long. So, um, one of the another reason, other than the whole JavaScript thing, is just you're generally dealing with small numbers anyway. So you might as well just go in with the whole milliseconds. Now, obviously, this can change if you're doing complex animations where things are moving around and some other more advanced stuff. But for simple animations just short durations are always going to be key. One of the things I see a lot of the time is people doing animations that are just too long, or transitions, I should say, that are just too long for what they wanna do. They should happen relatively fast. Uh, the next one I'm gonna look at is the transition property. Oops, property. So this is what am I transitioning? So in this case, it's background, background. And if I do that, nothing will change because I'm still just transitioning my background. Just to show that this can actually change things, if I switch this over to width, so say I want to transition my width over this duration, now my background is no longer transitioning. My background is instantly changing because the only thing that I'm telling my CSS that I want to transition is my width. So let's bring the background back on there just so it's working. But let's add a second um, transition here. Uh, transform rotate 45 degrees. So now when I hover on top, my square is uh, switching over. And for this, we're going to make my duration a little bit longer, 1000 milliseconds. Um, so you can see that the color, my background color here is taking that whole one second to change colors, but the rotation is happening instantly. So on the transition property here, there are a couple of things that are important to know. Uh, one of them is if I don't include it at all, it's going to transition everything. So you can see now that I didn't include that, it's doing both of them at the same time. I can also do the same thing by writing all. So if I write all, well, there we go. Now it's loaded in and now it's transitioning all of my properties. Um, so this is sort of the easy, nice, fast way to do it, but I will encourage you not to do this because 
Transitions are CPU intensive. There are some that the GPU can rely on, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Your graphics processor can do acceleration on a couple of them, but there's not very many, and I'm going to talk about those a little bit later on. But just to say that most of the time, it is the CPU that's doing it, and this can cause some really janky animations. There's, It's really easy to run into janky animations if you're using all, because it's going to start trying to animate everything, and that really slows things down. Especially, it might be working great on your super high-end computer, but think of a budget cell phone where all of a sudden you're doing a whole bunch of stuff and it's causing some issues. So in this situation, I have my background and my transform that are both changing. So what I can say is the properties that I want to change, background, and if I just write background, we know that it's only going to change that. But I can comma separate and write transform, and there we go, it's loaded in. So by doing this, it's only going to pay attention to these two properties. It's not looking at the width, the height, and well, just the width and the height, but it's it, it's making it a little bit easier on the CPU because it's not trying to look at everything. It's only looking at the certain things that I'm targeting. So if you are going to do a transition that does involve multiple properties, I would encourage you, I know it's longer to write, but for performance reasons, I really will encourage you to comma separate all the different properties that you are transforming. Now this next one is a really fun one, and this is the timing function. So it's a bit of a weird name, so let's just type it in, transition timing function. So it's a long, func, I have to spell it right first, function. It's a long one to write out. And uh, this is a bit of a weird one, especially if you're not familiar with some of the things. Um, I do believe the default is ease. I think if I do that, it's just going to be what we were already on. Now, for this, I've made a separate pen, and both of these code pens will be in here. But we can see here, I have a few different animations going on. Now, all of these animations are taking the exact same amount of time to do. The difference between them is... The top one is called linear. We have an ease in, an ease out, and an ease in and out. So just look at the one at the top when I hover over here, and you're gonna see it stays at a constant speed the whole time. So it just goes, and then when it gets to the end, it just stops. The next one down here, ease in, means it starts really slow. So you can see it's, it's slower than all the other ones, especially here, you can see it's really slow, and then it speeds up throughout. So it's easing into the animation. It's going from slow and then fast, and it catches up to everything else right at the end. And ease out is the opposite. Ease out is going to go from being very fast to slowing down at the end. So it's the fastest one, and then it slows right down. And it goes really fast, and then it slows right down. And then an ease in out is a combination of both. It's going to start slow, speed up, and then slow back down at the end. So, woo, and it all of them all end up at the same place at the end. It really depends what you want to be doing with your animation and which one you will probably be using. Linear, you just won't be using. <laughs> Linear is generally, um, it's not a natural type of animation that you might use. So to do any of them, you know, just ease in, ease out. Um, but there's actually a few more than just these ones. There are some other options. Um, and if you want a faster way to work than just sort of like guessing at which one you really want to do, the dev tools are a fantastic way to visualize what's going on and offer us more options to use. So what we can do here is I'm going to right click and choose inspect element. If you're in Chrome, that would just be an inspect. I'm in Firefox right now. And here on my transition, I get this little icon here, Chrome, it's a sim it's a little box instead of a circle, but you'll get a similar thing next to where it says ease in. And I'm gonna click on that and look at this. I get this really cool thing here um, where there's three different types of options here. I have an ease in, an ease out, and an ease in out. And in Chrome, you get the same thing. But instead of it being, it's not as visual as this, but you'll get one like this and it has a little arrow on the right and a little arrow on the left. And you can just click and cycle through all of these options. Um, so if I'm on an ease in, it's showing me all the different options I have for ease in. So on ease in, and this little line at the bottom is visualizing it for me. It's showing me an animation going back and forth. The Chrome one is a little bit better, I will admit. Um, but you can still see the way that it speeds up you know, you can see the animation going on there. If I go to quadratic, it's gonna go really fast. 
the beginning is really slow and then it goes really fast and it keeps going. Um, now this one you'll notice the line actually goes down and then up. So it's going to go backwards. So you see here it's jumping back and then going forwards. Um, I don't want to get too much into how these the curves are working, but it's pretty much if we go to linear, it's a straight line. So at this is one of the lines is the time passing. This one will be the time passing and then I think <laughs> one of them is time passing and one is the movement of it. So here it is just a constant rate. Whereas if I look at the backwards one, it's actually moving backwards a little bit as time passes. So time is actually time would be going this way and movement is going this way. So it's going to go backwards a little bit as time passes and then all of a sudden shoot up to the end. Now that's an ease in. If I go to ease out, you'll see all the curves go the other way. So ease in, the curves are this way. Ease out, the curves are the other way. Because on these ones, it's starting fast and then going slow. It's slowing down near the end. And then the ease in out give you these S curves where it's going fast, slow, uh, sorry, where it's going slow, fast, slow. So pretty much the more horizontal the line is, the slower it is, and the more vertical the line is, the faster it is. Um, so on any of these, as I'm clicking on them, you'll see here it's giving me something called a cubic bezier. And I can just take this cubic bezier, copy it, and I can actually just paste that right into my code right here. Boom. And now it's going to get that curve for its animation. Now, another thing that's really cool with this is, in Chrome and in um, Firefox, they're both the same. You can take these and click on the little handles and bring in your own animation, whatever you want to do. So if I do this, this is going to be this crazy thing where it's like shooting off farther. You can see it's bouncing back and forth. So I can take this whole thing, copy that, paste it right here, and now it should rotate backwards and then go forwards. It's going to be, whoa. It's a bit of a, a janky animation just because I did too much of it. Um, but you get the idea where you can see it sort of bouncing one way and then the other. So you can come in, try and develop your own animation and use, um, you know, use your own timing function in here really nice and handy to come up with something exactly what you want for your animation or for your timing function, I should say. And this one will probably be a little gentler. Still kind of janky. Well, not janky, but that's not too bad, actually. I sort of like that one. So we're going to stick with that for now. Now, the last one we're going to get to is the delay. So transition delay. And transition delay is how long does it take for the transition to actually happen? So I'm going to put in, uh, let's put in like two seconds, which is really long. And I'm going to put it on top. And we wait two full seconds, and then the animation happens. So how long until this transition starts happening? Now, um, in general, to the transition delay, you're not going to use it like that so much, um, just because two seconds, like, that's kind of ridiculous, right? Like, no one's going to be waiting around two seconds for something like that to happen, because that doesn't make too much sense. Um, now, one thing you can do, though, is instead of writing it out this way, there is the transition property, which is sort of like margin. So, you know, like margin, we have margin, which is the same as writing margin left, right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the transition property is the same. The transition property takes all of these. And one thing that's important is the order you do put them in. Because, well, sort of. <laughs> so let's just say here, um, I'm going to comment all this out. We'll do background. And we're going to do uh, 500 milliseconds. And we're going to say ease in. So it's going to turn, but you can see my background is still animating. That's just, you know, we'll make it really long just so we can see it's rotating, but I have, I made it so long now, actually, 5,000 5, is way too long. Uh, we'll do 1,000. There we go. So we can actually see the whole thing happen. Um, and it still takes a really long time to do, right? So this is why, in general, 1,000, like, holy moly, a second is a lot longer than you, than you realize it is. Um, so here we can see the animation is, is happening though, but it's only doing the background. So if I wanted to do this, I could comma separate. Um, oh, and I said the order is important. Here if I took this and I put it at the beginning, I'll make it shorter, uh, 250 milliseconds. Um, 
the, the thing that's important is where the delay comes in. Because um, here, say I do one second, you can see that, uh, there we go. So it's actually, it is working. Um, it's just, if you do two numbers, the second one is the delay. So even here, if I write like one second space 250, um, you can see that it's actually, it's one second is now my duration and there is a really short uh, delay of 250 milliseconds on it. Whereas if I make this a lot longer, you can see that now we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Oh, look, it just transitioned. That took a lot longer than I expected it to do. But you get the idea. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. There we go. And then when I come off. So it's doing this one as how long the transition takes. And then this one, the second number is always going to be the delay. Um, now, if you want to do multiple ones, so I want a one second background ease in. And then I'll do comma uh, 500 ms transform ease out. And then I can put a delay on this of, say, one second. Oh, it didn't work there. There we go. So there's a delay on that. So first it's doing the, there's no delay on this. So there's no delay on my background. So my background's not delayed. And then once this is done, because this is taking a full second to do, so I'm transitioning my background. Once my background is finished transitioning, because I'm putting a delay of one second on this, then that's happening. So it's transitioning color, then rotating, and then switching back and going back with the other way. Now, one word on a um, performance. So I said I was going to talk about this. If you can, limit your animations to transforms and opacity. So I'm currently transforming, uh, or I'm currently transitioning my background. But in general, you would want to avoid that. Now, I transition backgrounds for button hovers and stuff like that all the time. But for transforms and opacity, the browser uses our graphics card for these animations. So it helps them run smoothly. For others, if there's no GPU acceleration, you can quickly run into janky animation, especially if you're using the transition all. It's fun to animate things like box shadows and borders and a whole bunch of stuff all at the same time, but be aware that the browser is repainting things when it's doing this and it has a hit on performance. So I hope this has been a nice little introduction to just how we can handle our transitions and some other things you might be able to do with it. Uh, I hope you like this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corn in the internet just a little bit more awesome. And that's it for looking at the transition properties. I hope you like this video. And of course, if you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you have any comments, any questions, don't be shy to leave them down below. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. There's new videos like this every single week. And please don't forget until next time to make your corn on the internet just a little bit more awesome.